This might look surprising, but what you're seeing is not Android at all. This is a full KDE Plasma Debian desktop running on my Android phone, without root and without any third-party apps. In today's video, I'll show you exactly how I set this up and how you can do the same. Now, you're probably wondering, how is it even possible to run a complete Linux desktop on Android? Well, with Android 16, Google just introduced a native Linux terminal, giving developers real Linux command line access without third-party apps. It's built-in, sandboxed, and closer to a true Linux experience than ever before. So, that's the intro. Now, let's see if it is usable or not. If I open the system settings and go to the About section, you can clearly see it is KDE Plasma running on Debian 12. Now let's try to install some tools using the terminal. I am installing NeoFetch using the APT package manager. And as you can see, it is working perfectly, which means you can now run any Linux tool or script on an Android device. It comes with pre-installed Firefox, and surprisingly, it is also working without any issues. It is giving me near-native performance while it is running inside Android using VNC. I took it a step further and accessed it on my Mac using VNC. Honestly, I was blown away. Linux is running on my Android, and I'm viewing it right here on my Mac. Now let's see how to set up this on any Android 16 device. So this is my Pixel 6a, and it is running Android 16. First, you have to enable developer options by clicking several times on the build number. Once enabled, you can find this newly enabled option in System Settings. Go to Developer Options, scroll a bit, and look for an option called Linux Development Environment. Toggle this, and it will install a Linux terminal app on your phone. This is an Android 16 feature and not brand specific, but it only works on devices that meet the CPU requirements and support the Android Virtualization Framework, or AVF, for the Linux terminal to function. Some OEMs, like Samsung, may disable or not support AVF, effectively blocking the Linux terminal, even if the device runs Android 16. So check if your phone supports it. Now launch this terminal app and let it download the Linux environment. After the download completes, it will launch the terminal. The first thing we're going to do is set the password for the user, so type passwd to create your password. After setting up your password, update the repositories using apt update. Once done, we will install JIT using apt. After installing JIT, we have to download a script from GitHub repo. Open this Git repository. It is a script. This script enables quick GUI setup for Debian 12 on Android 16 terminals. Now copy the link of this repo and clone it on the terminal using git clone. After cloning, navigate to this script's directory and type ls to view the content of the directory. Now, before launching it, we have to give it executable permission using the chmod command. Permissions are granted. Launch the script by typing dot forward slash followed by the script name. Now the script is running. Select your preferred language and create a login password. You can install any desktop environment that you want from the list. In this video, we are going to install KDE and I'll choose one. Click continue and it will download and install the complete desktop environment. It can take up to one hour, so be patient. Once it is done, it will ask for a VNC password. Create your VNC password. And when it asks for view only, simply press N because we want full control. Again, press N if you don't want Chinese pin input and accept all the requests that the terminal is asking you. Now, as you can see, our VNC and SSH server is live. We're going to use VNC because we want graphical access. Now minimize the terminal and open this app, VNC Viewer. It is free and available on the Play Store. I will provide a direct link in the description. Now click on this plus icon to create your connection and type your local host or local IP in the address bar followed by the port number. You can name it anything you want. 
After that, click on Create, and it will create a VNC connection. Press the Connect button. It will prompt you for a password, so enter the one you created during the setup and click Connect. As you can see, we're now inside the GUI, a complete Linux desktop environment on your phone. You can carry your Linux system anywhere you go. If you close the connection or the terminal and want to reconnect, simply open the terminal again. The VNC server will start automatically, so all you need to do is launch the terminal and reconnect in VNC app. One final technical consideration to keep in mind, occasionally Android's aggressive battery optimization algorithms may terminate the VNC server process to preserve battery life. If you encounter this issue, you can resolve it by navigating to developer options and disabling the child process optimization feature, which will prevent the system from automatically killing background processes. And that's it. You now have a fully functional Linux desktop running right on your Android device. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like the video, subscribe for more tech tutorials, and drop your questions in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.